Welcome to Mastara for a cold-blooded video, because this week's topic is the reptilian humanoids of Mastara. There are people out there that want to take races out of the Forgotten Realms and cram them into Mastara. I want to play a Dragonborn. He will be the only Dragonborn in Mastara, which makes him unique, so everyone will treat him special. Just one little Dragonborn. Do you want to get vivisected by Glantrians? Because that's how you get vivisected by Glantrians. Or thrown into the pits of Thyatis, so Thin Call can enjoy watching you bleed out. Besides, Mastara already has nine. Yes, nine reptilian humanoid races. So where are you going to sneak in your Dragonborn or your yon -T? Go away. Mastara's full. I'm Mr. Welch, and today I'm going to put everything into scale. The nine races of reptilians are Tortles, Snappers, Lizardmen, Gatormen, Caiman, Sisthic, Chameleonmen, Crowley, and Carnifex. I've already covered the Tortles in a previous video, so that leaves eight races all over the known world in Savage Coast, taking up all the good spaces if you want to be if you're a reptile. Several of these were playable races, especially with the Savage Coast variants, but a few were dedicated bad guys who saw the rest of the world as meat. Mastara does love its variety. Going in the above order, first we've got the evil drunk cousins of the Tortles, the Snappers. They appear very similar at first glance, but there are a few differences that make them distinct races. Snappers can't retreat into their shells like Tortles can. They're also natural swimmers, unlike their cousins who are natural sinkers. Snappers are much bulkier than Tortles and stand about the same height. The biggest difference between the races are Snappers are loners, they only travel in groups when they're in charge. They don't have friends, they have minions. Because of this tendency to browbeat others into submission, Snappers are never found together. Snappers hate being under someone else's command. If they're forced to work for someone, they will try to eliminate them as leader and take his place, or failing that, desert at the first opportunity. That makes them terrible henchmen, as they are very prone to taking bribes or similar. The only time snappers work together is during mating season, when they return to their breeding grounds, which are stone mazes that were crafted by their ancestors. Once the eggs are laid and hatched, the snappers go their separate ways and return to their old habits. The basic lizard man, or Shazak in their tongue, are the most common form of reptilian humanoid in Mastara. They're found almost anywhere there is a warm, wet climate, and are common in the known world, Savage Coast, Hollow World, and all points in between. They are the race from which the Cayman and the Gatormen were created by Glantrian wizards to make better slaves. Lizardmen are clannish, and they are bound by family. The few lizardmen leaders have to get an alliance of multiple families together to gain a large enough following to create a small army. Otherwise, lizardmen just live in isolated groups, foraging and hunting just enough to feed their tribe. While lizardmen aren't a unified race, they do share numerous traits. They're normally disinterested in other races, especially their politics. Derekin has an enormous population of lizardmen living in Malfeggy Swamp. But the lizardmen don't recognize Derekin, and the humans have long since given up on trading with the lizardmen. When they start raiding for food is when they have the most conflict with other races. But they don't have dreams of conquest, and like the humanoids, they were never promised the lands of other races. You leave them alone, they leave you alone. That seems to be their life's motto. Gatormen, or the Garash as they call themselves, are one of the two slave races created from lizardmen stock. They proved to be uncontrollable as their large size and ravenous appetites made them threats to their masters. After numerous failed batches, the wizard released all the Gatormen into the wild where they bred out of control and began to spread to additional regions of Mastara. They are openly expansionist and consider all other races food. They are huge, standing almost eight feet tall in their largest form. They are exclusively carnivorous, and they don't care where the food comes from. Gatormen represent a serious threat to all their neighbors, regardless of race. They lay eggs in clutches, and due to their large size, they have few predators. They quickly outgrow any region they settle in, and have to acquire new territory to maintain their food supply. They have sorely pressed the lizardmen in the Malfeggy Swamp, as well as their territories in the Savage Coast. Hunting Gatormen for just population control is a common mission for adventurers and government forces in the numerous human nations. However, it's a dangerous mission as Gatormen are formidable by themselves and they are rarely found alone. Caymen, or Kema as they call themselves, are the opposite end of the lizardmen size spectrum. Again, created by a Glantarian wizard, they proved to be too strong-willed to serve as slaves and won their freedom by refusing to do any work at all unless compensated. Caymen stand about two feet tall on average, but what they lack in size they make up for in bravado. They are one of the most intelligent reptilian races, actually practicing agriculture and using domesticated animals. They know their small size is a detriment, but they won't publicly admit it. Because of their increased intelligence, they are one of the only reptilians that openly trades with others. Caymen are incredibly brave for their size. Their list of enemies is long, as they are small and apparently weak. The Caymen fear none of them. They have organized various tactics for each type of foe that has attacked them in the past. They set up traps and snares specific to local predators. Caymen live in mud villages they consider to be architectural masterpieces, and they won't hear any criticisms. They will gladly trade for modern building materials, but due to their primitive living conditions, they rarely can afford them. 
They are known for being strong allies, as they are as loyal as they are brave. Tribes that live near civilized regions will often be paid or recruited by the local lords to act as an early warning against approaching threats. Next up is the Sisthic, or the Desert Scourge. This is a race found in arid climates and are a real threat to the nation of Yalaram. They prefer to live in the deep desert, striking caravans and border towns for weapons and slaves. They are a matriarchal society, as the males are larger but also less intelligent. The females of the species are the warriors and the leaders, while the males tend to the herds and perform physical labor. They are a highly organized race, with a focus on a warrior cult and the need to subjugate their neighbors. The Sisthic dominate large portions of the Yalarm Desert, and are considered a serious threat to the nation itself. The fact that they live in the most inhospitable terrain makes fighting them difficult, as moving an army across leagues of brutal desert makes engaging them in battle almost impossible. The Sisthic attack as raiders, keeping the Sultan's forces either locked in place waiting for an attack, or scrambling to respond to an attack on a distant village. The Vizier has actually had some success in creating caravans that are manned entirely by adventurers and soldiers, especially members of the Order of the Desert Rose. When the Sisthic attack, they are instead ambushed by the heavily defended caravan, which otherwise has nothing of actual value. The Chameleon Men, or Wallara, are a tragic race and tie heavily into the Savage Coast. Want to know why some Aranea can shape change and others can't? Blame the Wallara. Or more specifically, blame what the Aranea did to the Wallara. Once the Chameleon Men were an advanced race, they lived in a godforsaken wasteland that was hostile to almost all life, but it was their godforsaken wasteland that was hostile to almost all life. There they thrived, communing with their patron immortal, who turned out to be the patron of dragons. The Wallara learned about the existence of the Aranea, which for them wasn't a big deal. They lived near cat people and dog people, so they just added spider people to that list. The paranoid Aranea weren't having any of it, and cast a spell to remove the knowledge of them from the Wallara's memory. The spell backfired, and instead the Wallara had their minds wiped back to the Stone Age. Their patron immortal thought this was a bit of a dick move, and responded by returning the favor. Instead of removing all knowledge from the minds of the Aranea through magic, he summoned every dragon he could, and promptly started carpet-bombing the Aranea back to the Stone Age. The spider folk took up shape-changing as a method to avoid getting used in a dragon taffy pool, and eventually they made peace with the Great One, but the damage to the Wallara couldn't be reversed. Wallara are a single sex race. Every one of them is male. When a Wallara molts, he takes the skin to a shrine to the Great One, and about 1 in 20 is blessed by the immortal and the skin is turned into an egg. The Chameleon Men, despite their name, can't change colors. Their one ability is a magical short-range teleportation, as they prefer to run rather than fight their enemies. The region around them is hostile to life, a broken desert filled with large amounts of hostile creatures. The Wallara are tribal, and while their memory of their former greatness is gone, they are slowly catching up to the technological base they once enjoyed. They aren't used to visitors, few outsiders can survive the desolate wasteland, and Wallara are never found outside of it. The Crowley are only found on the Savage Coast, specifically in the Arm of the Immortals. They are a winged race, as everything in Mistara eventually develops wings if you look at the monster manuals. They are a highly physical species, known for their strength and stamina as well as their dexterity, and they have the reputation of being fierce warriors. While they do possess wings, they can't fly for long periods of time or carry heavy weights in flight. Their wings allow them for quick bursts of speed in the air, but they tire quickly using them and have to land frequently. On the ground, their natural strength and agility is more than enough to sustain them in a fight. The Crowley, like a lot of the reptilian races, are a cold and pragmatic people. They care little for those who can't fend for themselves. This includes other Crowley. They view the weak as a drain on society. They won't even help their young hatch, believing only the strong deserve to be Crowley. While they avoid other races normally, the race has a strong fascination with trade. They love to do business with other races, and love haggling when making a deal. Some Crowley even trade away their services as mercenaries, and for that they command high prices. Finally, there is the lost race, the Carnifex. They are an ancient species, one of the first created after the formation of Mastara. The Carnifex soon dominated the planet. Every race they encountered was either slaughtered or enslaved. They are massive, standing at the minimum 10 feet tall, capable of foul magics, and individually almost unkillable. After untold years of domination, the Immortals grew tired of them, well, killing everyone, and locked them away in an extraplanar prison. Here they plot their return, planning how they will reconquer what was taken from them once they emerge from their prison. Carnifex are cruel yet intelligent creatures. They have a heavily regimented society where the stronger members command the lessers. They were always naturally adept at magic, and their wizards and clerics were true masters in the arts. 
If freed, they would seek to restore their planet-spanning empire, which might be difficult as other races are evolved enough now to actually put up a fight. Not that that would stop the Carnifex from trying. Reptilian races in Mastara run a gamut, with a large number being just monsters to stab. If you want to expand on them, they can certainly use upgrades like spellcasters, such as Shaman, or in the more organized ones like Sisthic or Crowley, add specific types of creatures for various roles like assassins or just brutes. You will always have a choice when you need something scaly for your adventure. That's why Mastara has no Dragonborn. That's why Mastara needs no Dragonborn. Because the Carnifex ate them. Next week, I'm doing a lore dive into one of the more important aspects of Trolladaran society, the Shearing Ceremony, or why Junior has to get a job. But until next week, remember that turtles are nature's suction cups.